What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking all about kelp, its benefits, why it's good for your plants, why it's good for fruit, why it's good for the soil. All of that's going to be covered off today, so let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up everybody? doing a little digging again you know one can only play with themselves I mean by themselves with them by them yeah by by themselves so much before even that gets old so yeah okay so the first thing that usually comes to mind for most people when they think kelp they think seaweed on the beach they think I don't know, rotten Jersey Shore or something. That really isn't the case. Now, this is a very diverse plant that propagates all around the globe in all different temperature waters, but today we are talking about cold water kelp specifically. And not just that, more of like a North Atlantic kelp. So what we use in our products at Green County Fertilizer is a product called, or a plant called, Ascophyllum nodosum. So that particular material is also sometimes called a rock plant. Uh, it doesn't grow fast like giant kelp does, which can grow between one and two feet a day. Uh, this is something that takes a little longer to propagate, but the material itself is in wide abundance. In fact, that particular variety is probably one of the most abundant that's around anywhere to be harvested. When you take a look at the harvestability of this particular kelp, there's somewhere around 2 billion pounds of it on the coast of Maine, and I believe in the last year or so, around 22 million pounds of it has been harvested. So this is a, a material that can just keep replenishing. It's very sustainable, it's very beneficial, it's something that can be added into many, many different things, it has loads of purposes, and is just all around a pretty cool plant. Now the benefits of kelp itself have been noted in gardening for over 800 years. This is something that was used in Scotland, in English gardens, and just moved through Europe, put into uh, seaside cottage gardens and into farmland. Whenever it was washed up on shore, it was rinsed, it was put down into the ground, decayed, and provided a pretty decent soil food. Sea kelp in and of itself is not a fertilizer, and I think that that needs to be really clear. So we need to stop right here for one second, and I'm going to point to a couple of things. Now, number one, if you're just joining me and you just subscribed to the channel and you're trying to catch up on things, I'm going through a few different key pieces, and I'm going to start you right here 
with the humic video. So go back to that, look through that particular video, watch it, understand the basics of humic. As soon as you get done with that, then I'm going to have you jump here to the fulvic video. Now there's a reason that I'm having you step through these particular items because these are materials that we use in our Green County products just to make fertilizer better. And not only that, it makes the soil better and the plant healthier and all these other things that we've been covering off. So do that. Do that first. Well, you don't have to do it first, but just know that this is all a sequence, okay? So we're talking about particular items in, the, in these products, and not only that, just in the world in general, and so that you can understand the benefits of them more. So Kelpalone is not a fertilizer. It's more of a soil conditioner, but it has these particular properties that will do some pretty cool things to plants. Now, there are a few different plant hormones that are contained inside of kelp, especially in these concentrated versions. And what you're looking at are a few different growth regulators, auxins, gibberellins, and cytokinins. So there are different levels of those particular materials in all plants. So there's these oxic responses that you can get from weed killers that use synthetic auxins that can cause cell explosion and kill a plant targeted to a weed. You can do the same thing in grasses as people have seen. Certain uh, synthetic auxins put onto turf will kill turf if it's you know the wrong variety of this or that. There's a natural occurring auxin that is in these particular sea kelp plants that helps to boost growth enhance cell division, enhance nutrient uptake, do all of these really cool things. And also, kind of as a sideline to that, the amount of amino acids that you find inside of the kelp plant are also quite huge. Now there's a few that stand out above the others, where you might have like tryptophan, lysine, glutamine, a couple of those in there, but then you're looking at like nine or so that are in more of a plentiful realm. Uh, out of 20, which is, you know, it's a good robust amount of amino acids that are also in that plant. So if you just think about this like this, compost piles, green waste, uh, live plant material, make some of the best soil food that you could possibly get. Returning your grass clippings back down to the ground so that you actually get that cycling of that nutrient. We're basically just taking a plant and then we are using the greatest benefits of that plant and getting it down into the soil and into the plant. So. One of the cool things about kelp and one of the reasons that we use it in liquid and why it's so much more effective than going out in a dry form at all is because there is, again, this small particle, this ability for that particular item, new, what, ingredient, what, whatever you want to call it, uh, to get into the phytoregulatory system of the plant. This is absorbable by the leaf tissue of the plant, which makes it react much greater. Now there's pluses and minuses to that. So in some cases you can definitely overdo it and get more of an oxic response and cause plant damage if you use too much of that material at once. There is a balanced way to do things and heat will even make that worse. So when you're applying a kelp or a concentrated kelp product, it is very key to make sure there is a ton of water going down with it, your temperatures aren't crazy hot, and you're definitely not overdoing it. One product that we have at Green County is a product called Seek, which I'm particularly proud of, but not a lot of people use it. It's something that tends to scare a few people away. Where it's shown to have been adopted the most is in more of the ornamental side, ornamentals and trees. People really like it for that because it doesn't stain, it's very easy to use, and the rates are really low. So even on that particular material, we're only putting it out between 16 and 24 ounces an acre. It's a very, very low rate. Now that one is a 50% kelp concentrate plus potassium, which makes it excellent as a stress reliever, and it's a killer product for that. One thing that's been noted over the years is that kelp can actually slow down senescence of a plant, the actual aging of a plant, which is one thing that can give a plant certain stresses. Now, the beauty of that is if the plant is able to stay in this sort of easier living state, you're obviously going to be able to deal with stresses greater. Now, there's been some other sort of fringe things that have been noticed and not 100% verified yet scientifically, and, I, I struggle to go out into these areas, but there have definitely been some notations about uh, insect resistance, and that may just be because the plant itself is not sending out any sort of uh, stress response into the ethers and, and attracting pests. So that's pretty cool. Oh, 
Oh, hi. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I know, that's okay. She just started, like, right a second ago. So one thing that's great about kelp also is that you're going to get a microbial food that gets down into the soil quickly. And since it is full of like trace elements and micronutrients and all of these other little goodies, microbes are going to chew on that and flourish and be very happy that you're feeding the soil something new. When I was designing products and putting things together, I always wanted to have a measure of kelp in there. And it was for the trace elements. It was for the amino acids. It was for this sort of additional carbon source. It was for all of these plant regulators and all of this good stuff that was sort of rolled into a tight package. And I never wanted to use a reconstituted kelp product, something that was shipped to me dry and put together. It had to be maintained in a liquid form. And the material that we've been using for years and years and years now is exactly to that structure. And it maintains a very high cytokinin count for that particular material over 400 parts per million, which is awesome. So I've gotten this into pretty much every single product. There's certain specialty ones where we don't use kelp because it's more for soil food or it's something that's just for a color response. But when you're looking at the combo products and things like RGS, 1801, 402, 002, 901, all of these different things that we've got, the kelp has played a vital role because there's a piece of it that I really like and I showed in the Fulvic video as well of how things can separate. You get smaller, lighter molecules, you get things that go into the plant, that we can get a good foliar response out of the turf or the plant or the tree or whatever you may be applying it to and get a very quick result out of that application. So many of the things that I do split into all of these different pieces as they are applied with water and applied down to the soil and plant themselves so that you get benefits from tissue to root and into the soil. So that's it. I'm going to go back inside because suddenly it's gotten really freaking cold. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.